worship and we glorify and we magnify you, Jesus. God, we come tonight, God, to hear a word from you, God. Speak, Holy Ghost, speak to us tonight, God. Speak that we may hear you, God. God, we come tonight, God. God, to hear a word that will take us from glory to glory, God. God, we come tonight to hear a word, God, that will lift up our spirits, Jesus. God, we thank you, God. We come tonight, God, to let the enemy know that he is defeated and you are exalted. God, we come tonight, God, to worship your holy name, Jesus. God, your name is a name above all names, God. We welcome you in this place, God. come tonight, God, to hear what each other says, God. Lord, we are many members, but we're one body, God. Lord, iron sharpens iron, God. God, we know right now, God, that you are a friend that sticks closer than a brother, God, but we come tonight, God, to hear from you, God. God, encourage us, God. Build us up where we've been torn down, God. Heal us where we've been hurt, God. Talk to us, God, when there's been a period of silence in our lives, God. God, we ask right now, God, that your Holy Ghost rest in this place tonight, God. This place is covered in your blood, God. There's victory in this place tonight, God. We don't have to leave with what we brought in, God. We can leave whole. We can leave victoriously. We can live, leave more than a conqueror, God. But we got to believe that he, that he is a rewarder, God. That you are a rewarder, God. If we diligently seek you, God, you'll reward us, God. So, Father, we thank you tonight, God. And we give you all the glory and all the honor, God. It belongs to you. It's in your mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Welcome, 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 everybody. Amen. Welcome to our midweek boost Bible study. Amen. Amen. I welcome everybody in the sanctuary and everybody that's viewing by social media. Amen. We're going to go ahead and get started tonight. Amen. Everybody been having a good week? I'm sorry. Everybody been having a good week? Amen. Victory following you. Amen. Dev the devil still defeated in your life. Amen. We overcome us. Not just by the blood only, but, but the words of our testimony. Amen. Amen. Because it ain't about us, is it? Mm, we're going to find out tonight, ain't we? Yeah. Amen. Amen. So tonight we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to look in the book, of, uh, the book of Acts, the fifth chapter, verses 12 through 25. I had to backtrack a little bit, but it'll, it'll take us to where we need to be tonight. Acts, the fifth chapter, verses 12 through 25. And I'll be reading from the New Living Translation, but you may have something different. But it's the same word, amen. Acts, the fifth chapter, verses 12 through 25. Got the microphone sitting right next to, I think, Mr. Val. Acts, fifth chapter, verses 12 through 25. You know, this, this uh, Acts, the third, fourth, third, fourth, and fifth, there's some powerful chapters in the book of Acts. Amen. I like all of Acts, but these are some powerful, powerful chapters, and the Lord 
has been speaking to me the last couple of days about this. Amen. Everybody ready? We're going to read. Amen. Acts 5, 12 through 25. Amen. The apostles were performing many miraculous signs and wonders among the people. And all the believers were meeting regularly at the temple in the area known as Solomon's Colonnade. No one else dared to join them, even though all the people had high regard for them. Verse 14, yet more and more people believed and were brought to the Lord. Crowds of both men and women. Verse 15, as a result of the apostles' work, sick people were brought out into the street on beds and mats so that Peter's shadow might fall across some of them as they went by. Verse 16, crowds came from the villages around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those possessed by evil spirits, and they were all healed. Amen. So we, 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 we studied that not too long ago, but this, that's just, I had to get you to this right here. This uh, 12th, uh, 17th verse, excuse me, 17th verse. The high priest and his officials were, who were Sadducees were filled with jealousy. They arrested the apostles and put them in the public jail. But an angel of the Lord came at night, opened the gates of the jail, and brought them out. Then he told them, go to the temple and give the people this message of life. Verse 21. So at daybreak, the apostles entered the temple as they were told and immediately began teaching. When the high priest and his officials arrived, they convened the high council, the full assembly of the elders of Israel. Then they sent for the apostles to be brought from the jail for trial. They thought they were still in jail, but they weren't. But when the temple guards went to the jail, the men were gone. So they returned to the council and reported, the jail was securely locked with the guards standing outside, but when we opened the gates, no one was there. When the captain of the temple guard and the leading priest heard this, they were perplexed, wondering where it would all end. Where would it all end? Then someone arrived with startling news. The men you put in jail are standing in the temple teaching the people. Mm. Tonight we're going to talk for a little while. Well, we all going to talk tonight. Amen. I'm going to call on you tonight. So don't, don't think, hey, this is a, a Val and, and uh, I think that's a friend's mic that we have right there. So if you got something to say, just raise your hand. We'll pass you a mic. Amen. I'm not going to call you by name. I point at you because you may not want to be called out. Amen. Uh, tonight we're going to talk from th this subject right here. Uh, what will it cost you? What will it cost? cost you you ever think about that a lot of time in life we always think about when we get ready to do something we always think in our mind if I do this what will it cost me is it going to cost you time effort money embarrassment amen you know we think about those things in every part of our life if we think about so what if, if I do this what is it going to cost me amen but tonight, I, I want to talk a, a little bit about this. We always talk about our salvation. You know, we, we, who, who's glad they're saved in here? Hallelujah. We, we're glad we're saved. We, we, we talk about that a lot. Amen. We, we talk about, um, sometimes we talk about how, how God delivered us and what he delivered us from and everything. But we, all, we love to tell people, oh, I'm saved, sanctified, fire baptized, Holy Ghost filled, tongue talking we, we we always tell that don't we but this is what the lord spoke to me he said we can't help uh people get over what's holding them hostage until they realize that they're not the only ones going through it we can't help people get over what's holding them hostage until they realize they are not the only ones going through it and god gave me that scripture first corinthians 10 13 is that the temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. 
and God is faithful, he will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. He said, when you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. We have to let people know. People know we saved. Everybody know Minister Rosie saved. We know she saved, don't we? But how many of us know that there's something inside? There's stories inside of us. There's testimonies inside of us that sometimes people have to hear. Because a lot of times people are going through the same thing that we've been delivered from, but they don't get delivered. You know why? Because they think they're the only ones that's going through it. You ever been, you ever been in a situation and you think, who can I go to? You've never heard anybody testify about what you're going through. You start to think, and say, well, I'm the, one, I'm the only one going through this. How can I get deliverance if I'm the only one going through it? And God said, we got to tell people. People know we saved, but we got stories inside of us. I, I've got some stories inside of me that I can tell. And I, I've, I've told some stories about, not, not that I'm proud of them, but because when we, when we uh, uh, like the scripture said, we overcome by the blood of the land and the words of our testimony. Because I overcame, I've got a testimony, and my testimony can help somebody else, right? right. See, we only want to tell the goodness of God. But we got to tell people about before the goodness happened to us. Amen? So it says, so we as believers are so happy for the arrival that we never tell people about the journey. We happy. We happy. Oh, we, we can shout. We can run. We can jump. We can do all that stuff. And people, that's why I said people know we say. Oh, God is so good. We wave our hands and we, oh, we always got a testimony how good God is. But what is God good for? What did God deliver you from? What did he deliver you from? I, I, I've testified before. Um, God delivered me from uh, nicotine. There's a lot, a lot of other things God delivered me from. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this. A, a lot of times, um, um, God will deliver us from some things that we don't know that we're addicted to because we don't do them all the time. Y'all hear me? God will deliver us from some things even though we don't do them all the time so we don't think we're addicted. Amen? This, this, this is addicted. Addiction. 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 What you were dependent on. That's what addiction is. What you were uh, dependent upon. Something that is psychologically or physically habit forming. You think about it, you got to have it. You see it, you got to have it. That's what, that's what an addiction is. A addiction is something that's abnormally strong. It gives you an abnormally strong craving for it. That's what an addiction is. And we have people that are addicted. Pornography. When I was in the service, that was a big thing. You know, around a bunch of guys, they passed books around and everything. And, and th this was, can I, get, can I tell you my reasoning? This is my reasoning right here. Oh, I'll look at them, but I ain't going to buy it. Does that mean that I, I didn't have a problem because I didn't buy it? I looked at it. Amen? So just because I didn't buy it, I was still looking at it. If I saw one, I'm going to look at it. So I was addicted. I was addicted. But I overcame by the blood. I, they, you know, people look at that junk, junk now. I don't want to see that. I'm married. God has blessed me with a wife. I ain't got to look at that. that that's, that's, that's just junk. But we, we, we go through stuff. And see, y'all, that's probably the first time somebody ever heard me say that before. Not that I was proud of it, but I'm glad he, he delivered me from it. But somebody else is going through that. And because we never say anything, they see us jump around and happy. What are they happy for? I'm happy because he delivered me from drugs. He delivered me from alcohol. He, de he delivered me from a sexual addiction. He delivered me from all that. But the only thing people know is that we've just been delivered. But we, they don't know what we've been delivered from. What better place to tell than the church? I mean, you don't have to be graphic about it. You don't have to be graphic about it, do we? Amen? So anybody got anything to say before we move on?
Like I said, we, we, we happy about the arrival, but we never tell people about our journey. You know, a journey means that there are steps. We don't just get delivered. Some people don't. Sometimes you, what, what I tell you about when I was uh, addicted to, to nicotine, I stopped for a week. I start back. Three weeks, start back. Three months, I start back. Then finally I say, stop, that's enough. God, you got to deliver me. You got to do it, God. You take that taste away from me. Because I try, I say, hey, I can quit this thing. No, I can quit that. But I couldn't do it. So I had to let guys know, man. I said, I, it wasn't of me. I couldn't do it myself. And we got people, we got people now that need to know these things. It ain't all about a patch. It ain't all about some chewing gum. It ain't about going to a class, amen. Sometimes you can just call on the name of Jesus. You ain't got to go through a 12-step program. We, we ain't got to meet every Wednesday at 3 o'clock with a coin in our pocket and, you know, and tell people, uh, my name is so-and-so, uh, I'm going to add it. But think about this. They've been meeting for four, five, six years, and some of them regress. But all I did was call on the name of Jesus. Jesus, you got to help me. And God delivered me. I figured like this, if he heard all of Israel crying out, he can deliver me. Yeah. If he can do all that little old me, he can deliver me. And he did that. But we got to let people know, amen, quit telling people, I'm, I'm, I've arrived, I'm, I'm, I got a ro- I'm on the road to glory. One day my name is, go- my name is already written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I'm going to be sitting in the, on the streets of gold. I'm going to be doing all this stuff. But nobody knows how you got to, on that path to go to the streets of gold. Nobody knows. Anybody got anything to say so far? Okay. Is it on? Just kind of speak loud so they can hear you. Yeah, I heard you say that when you delivered us. I believe that God delivers us from something that we ask to be fulfilled. We ask <laughs> but at the same time, is it okay sometimes that people, I don't know if people are at a different place, you know, like if I go through something mm-hmm. traumatic in my life, I may respond a little different than you may respond. But with those groups, I like say if you're an alcoholic mm-hmm. and you go to a traumatic event, even though God delivered you from it, our physical nature may have a tendency to regress back to what we know, you know, comforted us. But as we spiritually, we may be saying, okay, but I don't need to do this. And maybe we can't find comfort in that group. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Maybe we can't find comfort in those people that say, hey, you know, we went through this, we go through this trials. And they may have to go back to that group of people that went that actually went through it with them and talk to them to get that, you know, that encouragement. I'm trying to see is that so wrong to have those groups to support you, especially if, even if God delivered you. We know sometimes when we go through stuff, we have a tendency to, tendency to regress back if we're not in, a, in that place with Christ to regress back to where we knew was our comfort. Okay. So, so what you're saying is, asking. okay, you're asking. No, I'm not, I'm not speaking against those groups. No, I'm not speaking against those groups. But we, what I'm saying is we're so quick to tell people about those groups before we tell them about Jesus. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. And, you know, I, I'm not saying those groups don't help, but I, I believe Jesus is the answer. I believe he, he's the ultimate answer. Because I, 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 this, this is why I look at it. If I stay away from something, the taste is still there. The addiction is still there. It's just that I have not fallen back to it. I'm, I'm in what they call like remission. I, I got in my mind, I'm going to stay away from it. So, you know, if I stay away from it, you know, I, I, I can suppress that, 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 that appetite for it. But then one day something triggers it. 
because what do I have to fall back on? Nobody ever introduced me to anything. Nobody never told me about Jesus. That I can go to him when I, when I got a problem, you know. But we tell people, well, if, if you got a problem, you know, pull your corn out, you know, rub on your corn or call your sponsor. And there's nothing wrong with that. But how about, how, but do we know not, we can call on Jesus anytime? What if your sponsor don't answer? What happens then? You, we, we done seen these shows and, and uh, documentaries, true stories about how people, uh, they, they, uh, they came out of, they, you know, they was in remission. But then one day they got some bad news. They called their sponsor, couldn't get in touch with them, and all of a sudden they back out there. Then when the sponsor get in touch with them, they in the bar or whatever, whatever they at. You call on Jesus anytime though. And I'm not telling people don't go, don't go to those things. If, if God may direct you to go to those things. Amen. No. I mean, what you're saying is true. Because we have those why moments. God, why? Why is this happening, God? I've been doing everything you want me to do, God. I've been praying. I've been fasting. I've been reading your word. I've been going to church. I've been pay paying my tithes and offering God. So why is this happening? We have those why moments. Job yeah, you got them Job moments. But we got to be just like Job, right? Though we slay me, yet will I trust him. We just got to, I mean, we just, we just got to, and everybody, everybody is not on the same level as far as strength or, 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 or huh? Yeah, your faith level. Everybody is not, but the say, we got to believe that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. God, I'm going through this right now. You, Jesus is the only one that you can go to and he'll answer you. He said, call upon my name, I'll answer you. And I'll show you great and mighty things that you know. He'll tell you why it's going on. If you really got a relationship with him. You, you, ever, you ever ask God for something and then you, 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 you forgot all about it and all of a sudden he'll show it to you? And you, you forgot all about it. But you call somebody sometime on the phone and they won't, it'd it be a week or two weeks before they even call you back. Oh, I, I, I missed your call. That was two weeks ago. Amen. Like 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 a prayer circle. Eminem. Yeah. Motivational. Yeah. Eminem. Yeah. But um, the motivational Monday. <laughs> it is sweet. The motiv <laughs> the motivational Monday and. You know, when you start sharing stuff with a group of women, mm -hmm. you start to feel a different way about them. I'm serious. You know, I've been going to church mm -hmm. with women. When you start sharing stuff, and you're sincere, and you want to, you, you know, you're sharing stuff from your heart, mm -hmm. you start seeing them a different light. Yeah. So you may say, well, I, at least I, maybe I can talk to this sister. Yeah. See, and, and that's the whole thing. That's, that's what I'm talking about right there. When y'all, I, I don't know what going y'all mean. I don't know nothing about y'all mean. I don't know nothing about y'all me. I don't think I asked Mrs. Vale, well, did y'all have a good? She said, yes. That's all. I don't, what y'all talking about? That ain't, my, that ain't my business. But just like you said, Mrs. Gaines, when you, you never knew some things about some of those women, did you? You never know that. So it's some things you learn about some people that you never knew that they was going through. <laughs> So I am, am I correct? 
So there's some things you probably heard during this this motivational Mondays that you never heard before from certain people, right? Like, for instance, just for instance, you probably never knew this person uh, was molested or something like that, right? I mean, just for instance. So that means that if you went through that, you're able to go to that person and say, hey, you was on motivational money. You talk, they talked about this. I, I went through that. How did you get through it? That's what I'm saying. People, we, we can't be afraid to tell our testimonies because that'll get somebody delivered. They give somebody some help. I'm quite sure y'all motivational money is, y'all have, y'all love it, right? Yep. Okay, yep. <laughs> uh, but the, 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 let's let's get into the lesson here. That, those was that was just some some things. So we got we got we got it. To, uh, we can't help uh, people get over what's holding them hostage until they realize that they're not the only ones that's going through it. You know that's why a lot of people uh, don't come to church because they've been battered and bruised and they think they they've been in situations that nobody would understand. Oh, I can't go to church. I feel nasty. I, I, I feel you know like they won't accept me. Because of you know probably what I've been through, but this this is this is the place to be when you when you've been going through something like that or you something traumatic like that. This is the place to be because all we is all we are is a bunch of wounded victorious people. That's all we are. Every one of us in here ain't nobody here got a perfect story. Everybody done been through something. Everybody done encountered something. Amen. But look at us now. That's why I wake up every morning and say, God, you know what, God? I thank you, God, for thinking about me. To wake me up just to be in your presence. I think that's a privilege right there. To wake me up just to be in your presence. You care that much about me, God, that you woke me up to be in your presence. And I know when he wakes me up, there's something he want to say to me. There's something he want to say to me because there's something I've been going through. Amen? So we got to let people know that these temptations that they're going through is no different from what some of us have been through. Amen? So we as believers, uh, uh, we got to remember that we were once addicts ourselves. We were once addicts ourselves. Amen? So in Acts 4.13, remember the people, uh, they saw the boldness of Peter and John. They saw the boldness of Peter and John. Not that we flaunt what, we, what we've been through, but we're willing to tell a story. and We can pull people to the side. Hey, what, what's, what's going on with you? And people, if people, uh, what do we say, Mr. Val? Uh, people will remember when you speak to them, but they'll also remember when you don't speak to them. So we have to be conscious to always greet people. Hey, how are you doing? How's your week going everything? Instead of every time, they see, every time I see them, they never speak to me. People remember those things. So we got to always remember to be kind and courteous because who are people going to seek? When they need help, somebody's kind and courteous, right? Somebody feel like they got their best interest at heart. Amen? So Peter and John, they were going to the temple, and they saw, they saw the, uh, the paralyzed man, and, you know, he wanted some of this, and they said, we ain't got that, but what we do have, we give to you. So he rose up and walked. People got mad about that. Amen? People got mad about that. But then it takes us into the story we are right now. Go to, go to verse 17. Verse 17. Verse 17, it said, the high priest and his officials who were Sadducees were filled with jealousy. They arrested the apostles and put them in a public jail. So they put them in a worldly jail. Amen. But these are spiritual people that they put into a worldly jail. Now, we know, we know the, the, world can't, they, the world can't do nothing to us. We feel the effects of certain things, but the world can't do nothing to us, can it? How many of us know we, we are more than conquerors? We are victorious. So when I read that, I said, God, you know what? Here we go. The world is going to stifle them. The world wants them to shut their mouth. Shut your mouth. Don't say nothing. So he put them in prison. Amen? And that's what the world does, right? You can't preach on this corner. No, you can't have no minutes on this broad, you, on this broadcast. You can't do this. You can't do No, you can't have no tent means. You can't do Think about all the way, the way it used to be. Man, it was tent, used to be tent means everywhere. But the world told the believers, shut your mouth. No more prayer in school. You can't tell about the goodness of God anymore. 
If you do, you they'll put you in jail about telling about something good before telling about something bad. So it says, uh, so they uh, they put him in public jail. But an angel of the Lord came at night and opened the gates of the jail and brought them out. Then he told them, go to the temple, give the people this message of life. So in other words, the angel of the Lord came and opened the door and released them to go out and do what? Speak life. That's what the angel of the Lord did. The angel came down. You know, God looked at us and said, you can't, you can't keep my people hostage. My people got a story to tell. They got people that, you know, they need to get delivered. They got people that need to be healed. You know, because when, when Peter and John got out of a prison, they went back to the other believers. And they told them everything that the people tried to do to them in jail. They wanted to silence us and everything. So we came back and told y'all. The Bible said they all got together and they prayed and everything. All of a sudden the place started shaking. And the Bible said all of them were filled with the Holy Ghost. And then they went out and started doing signs, wonders, and miracles at the hands of the apostles. Amen? So God was letting them know that somebody, God, the world can't stifle us. Thank you, Lord. We're the only one that can stifle ourselves. Yes, we are the only ones. Thank you, can I give y'all a testimony? It's, it's funny. And Val, didn't, I guess she didn't believe I was going to do it. I told you I was, I was going to work and I was going to go in and tell, uh, <laughs> I was going to tell my supervisor I love him. I went and knocked on his door. I knocked on his door. He said, I'm gonna put my mask. No, you gotta put your mask on. I said, I just want to come in and let you know I love you. He just kind of he kind of laughed and he kind of chuckled. I said, I, I just want to let you know I love you. He said, okay. He just kind of laughed. And I just walked out. But see, what, what I'm saying is this, we gotta be bold. Right. The world is bold. The world entice our children with all kinds of stuff. And it's bold about they spend billions and billions of dollars to get our children and our minds too. But we got stories to tell to get people delivered. I don't know what I don't know what it did by me, you know, by me telling them, you know, hey, I apologize if I said anything or if I disrespected you in any kind of a way. I won't let you know I got your best interest at heart. That was the first day, but then I, I got convicted and I was told, you know, about that. And I went back and told, hey, you know what? T -t -t I love you. <laughs> she didn't know how to take it. So God released me. I was thinking in my mind, man, how am I going to approach this grown man? <laughs> I'm in a supervisor. This man, this big man, I'm, I'm a, how am I going to tell him I love him? I, I was. I'm not saying I would look for a way to get out of it. I would look for a way to do it. Because I was going to do it. Because I committed to that. And when I told him that, he, like I said, he just kind of chuckled and everything. But uh, he said, but the angel of the Lord came at night, opened the gates of the jail, and brought them out. God brought them out. Why, did he, God, why, did, why does God bring us out? Why does God bring us out? He doesn't bring us out just to bring us out, right? He brings us out because he want, there's work for us to do. And for his glory. And for his glory. What about Moses? When Moses, when Moses, when he said Moses, he said, Moses, I need you to bring my people out of Egypt. Moses had a stuttering problem, so he says. I, I, I mean, so he, he said he had a stuttering problem. But Moses was so mighty when God brought him out. And he told the people, what you see behind you, you'll see no more. So Moses had work to do. It wasn't about his stuttering. God delivered him from that. I believe God delivered him from that stuttering. Because every time he looked around, he was talking to the people. We've got work to do. All of us, every one of us has got work to do. Ain't that right, Minister Forrest? We, she, she can tell you about what being <laughs> oppressed on the job is like. What folks coming against you. She, she, so she can tell you about that. And I believe God put her in that position to go through that, but she's been delivered from it. So now somebody can come back and say, let me go talk to Minister for her because I'm going through the same thing she went through. God will open up that door and allow you to walk through it so you can meet somebody else to tell them how to get out of that. Ain't nobody got the perfect job. Who got the perfect job in here? Nobody got a perfect job here, do they? Let me ask you this question. And I, I, heard, I heard this pastor say this the other day. How many people on your, how many people here work 
And on your job, they know you saved. Raise your hand. How many people in here you saved and your job know you saved? Okay. okay, so that means there's something about your walk, mm -hmm. your talk, your character, mm -hmm. your anger level, all that stuff. So they know, they know, and you probably, every time something goes on, you, you speak the word, right? Yeah, I can say every time. I mean, but, you know, they, they, they <laughs> uh, this pastor said this, if you're the only one know you saved, you ain't really saved. I think there was just a figure, there was a, just from here trying to get across. But we, everybody should know. Don't bring that foolishness to me. Because I'm not of this world. I'm just visiting. And I'm trying to change this until I get up there. That's what I'm saying right there. That the reason he opened the door, because he said he told them, go to the temple, give the people this message of life. We go through stuff or we go through situations to deliver other people. And if you think you're the only one who went through that, it was just, it, that, like that thing was just designed just for you, you're wrong. You're mistaken. You are mistaken. Everybody go through something. It may not look just like what you went through, but that characteristic of what you went through that somebody else went through. But that's what we do. Because we went through it, we're able and we're ready to help somebody else out of it. See, we, we, we always say, uh, it's my friend right here. That, 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 that's, that's my, uh, that, that's my uh, what y'all, what, what do we call them? We don't call them church buddies. What do we call them? My church member? Saints? But can they go to you? Can they go to you? Can you keep a secret? Can they go to you for a, a word of encouragement? Can they go to you for prayer? They can't. Oh, I, thought you, I thought somebody said, mm-mm. The, 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 when, when, the, uh, when they got arrested, they were trying to be silenced by the world. They put them in a worldly jail. The world tried to silence them, but God said, no, 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 no. These men have been through too much. They just got out of prison. They were threatened and everything. But God said, they got a word to tell. What kind of word to tell? A word of life. That's what he said. He said, let them out. So they can go tell these people about this life. Amen? Anybody got anything to say before we move on? I think that's why people don't express themselves in public because they don't, if I tell you something, mm -hmm. I'm telling it to you. Why about time we get into conference is on Facebook? Mm hmm. It resembles the world too much in some things. We're not, we're not showing people that we're different, any more different than they are. Amen. Some of us, some of us, and I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm just saying, mm -hmm. when I was on my job, like you said, people knew what to come to me with. Amen. If you come to me talking about somebody, they're not going to do it. You come to me asking me, well, how was this man done? How was that man done? I'm not going to tell you. You're not going to get an answer from me. Mm-hmm. Amen. Because the way you treat me may not be the same because I may not approach you the same way. Mm -hmm. you know Amen. So we got to learn that when people come to us, we need to be at that point and at that maturity level where I'm not going to tell your business to nobody. I, mm -hmm. People tell me stuff all the time. I rarely talk to Andrew about anything. Mm -hmm. My own sister don't know some of the stuff that I know. Amen. And Amen. Because we don't get together and have a meal with the family, meal with the family. We don't do that. Amen. You know, we may talk crazy because she tells me crazy things all the time. But, <laughs> but we just talk about, you know, just different stuff that's going on. And we try to improve you know, the Bible. We try to talk about the Bible more than we're talking about people. 
Amen. A lot of times we can't talk to people because we should never be, well, first of all, you know who to tell your business to because if you got somebody that's been telling you everybody else's business, you may not want to tell your business to that person because nine times out of ten, your business is going to be on there. You know? When you're in that forum like you are on our Sunday morning, mm-hmm. you know, and you know that there's something that you need to talk about, mm-hmm. you know, We should be, and I, I believe, I believe it's, 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 I believe it's here. We should be so strong, and I believe we are strong at True Love Deliverance Church, where we should be able to go to anybody and not be afraid that our business will be told to anybody. But we, we it's, 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 and everybody know everybody pretty much, and we we know who gonna talk sometime, and we just have to praise the Lord. Don't let them go tell everything, cause there's some things. That, it's an intimate. That's y'all intimate time, where y'all can get together and y'all y'all can say some things, and y'all can cry or whatever y'all be doing, and you know spit bubbles and chew M and M's or whatever y'all be doing. But at the end, somebody get delivered because of maybe somebody testimony. Or maybe because of a prayer of somebody or, or that somebody said. Am, am I right? Can, can y'all hear me? And that, I'm glad you said that, Minister uh, again, uh, uh, Tillman, because this, this is what I wrote down here. We can't get people delivered until we get delivered. We may be delivered from what you were delivered from. Okay, let, let me kind of break that down to you. If I was a if I used to smoke, I was addicted to nicotine. I was addicted to nicotine, but I've been delivered from nicotine, right? Okay. But what about what I'm still addicted to? Y'all follow me? Okay, let me take you where I want you to go. So you may be saying to yourself, but I'm delivered, okay? But what about the addiction of being ashamed that you were addicted? Have you been delivered? Have we been delivered from that? Yeah, we've been delivered. I don't smoke no more. I've been delivered from nicotine, but I'm still addicted that I can't tell nobody that I was addicted. So I'm still basically addicted. Amen? So what, what did we say addicted, addiction was? What you were dependent on? I was dependent on that, right? But now I'm dependent on God. I don't worry about that no more. I'm not afraid to tell somebody. So if you don't, if, if you're not, if you, if you're afraid to tell what you was addicted to, that you're not addicted anymore, and you're not ashamed to tell somebody else that you were addicted, amen, so you're still addicted. Something is still holding you. Do y'all, y'all understand what I'm saying? We should not, we should not let, 
what we was addicted to embarrass us so much that we can't tell somebody else of what we was addicted to. But do y'all follow me or did I lose you? So if, 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 we, if we was addicted to pornography or whatever it was and we've been delivered from it, but we're ashamed that we was addicted to it, we still, that, there's still some addiction, there's something that's still clouding us right there. You're not, free, you're not really free. I, I mean, I, I'm not ashamed to say, God, you know, God, you delivered me from that, God. I, you know, even though I wasn't buying them, I was looking at it, God, but you delivered me. I don't want to see that junk no more. And, and I'm, I'm telling y'all now, so I'm, I'm, I'm free from it. I'm not addicted to being what I was addicted to. Okay, let me, let me keep on going here. That, okay, what about this? We may be delivered from what we were delivered from. We may be delivered from that. But or what about what we are still addicted to? That we, we are addicted to, we are afraid to tell people how many times we tried to, to, to get delivered from the addiction. Are, are, are we ashamed to tell people how many times we tried to get over the addiction? How many times we try to self-medicate or deliver ourselves and we fail many, many, many times? Does that addiction, is that, does that addiction still, does it shame you? Even though you deliver, does, how many times you try to get delivered, does that shame you? Does your addiction still have a kind of a hold on you? You understand what I'm saying? I, I've been delivered from that, but I still get that stigmatism of, man, I can't believe that it took me that long to get delivered from it. I'm not going to say that to nobody. I'll, so that addiction still has a hold on you. That, that addiction is telling you, you still, you still. That's something. This, don't say nothing. Don't tell nobody. Don't tell nobody. Just keep your mouth shut. Sometimes we're not really free because we relapsed and went back to what we was addicted to, but then we went back over and got delivered again. But we're ashamed to tell people that we relapsed. Y'all understand what I'm saying? A lot of time our addiction still has a hold on us because we have not confessed and told that addiction that you don't have a hold on me anymore. I can tell the world that I've been healed. I can tell the world what I was addicted to, but I can also tell the world that I'm healed and what I was addicted to. People say, I was a sinner saved by grace. I was this, this, okay, what was you addicted to? I was a sinner saved by grace. God did it. God delivered me from this long time ago. It's been 38 years, but what was you addicted to? Somebody need to hear our testimony. And I'm not saying stand in front of church, hey, y'all, y'all know I, I was addicted uh, to this, 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 this. No, we don't have to do that. But people, I can feel your spirit. Because I remember one time I talked to somebody here, and, and they told me something. It was so intimate. I had to preach one Sunday morning. I gave some papers out, and they said something. Never knew that happened to them before. But they was delivered from it. And by them coming to me and telling me about it, that showed me that they was delivered from it. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Do, am, am I losing y'all? We, we okay? Okay. So Revelation 12, 11, in the Passion Translation says, they conquered him completely through the blood of the lamb and the powerful word of his testimony. They triumphed because they did not love and cling to their own lives even when faced with death. These disciples, they told them, don't you testify. Don't you speak the word of God. Don't you, don't you heal nobody. Don't you do nothing else. And they put him in jail. But God came and delivered them from the jail. And God said, you go do what I told you to do. And what did they do? They went back and did what put their lives in jeopardy. Why? Because it wasn't about them anymore. It wasn't about them anymore. It was not about them anymore. See, a real believer would go if no one else goes. A real believer would tell it if nobody else would tell it. That's what a real believer would do. Here I am, Lord, send me. 
A believer follows God, not crowds. A real believer will follow what God says and not what the crowd say. How many people say, don't you go out there and preach that word no more? We're going to let y'all out, but don't, don't you go preach that word no more. And they go hide. What happened when Jesus, was getting cruci- when Jesus was crucified? All the disciples left. They was ashamed. They was afraid of what was going to happen to them. A real believer, he's not worried about what happens to him. These men, they got out of prison. And the Bible says this. When the high priest and the fish arrived, they convened the high council, the full assembly of the elders, they... Then they sent for the apostles to be brought from the jail. They sent for the apostles, the ones that were spreading the word of God, the ones that were speaking life. They sent for them, come bring them to us. But the Bible says when the temple guards went to the jail, the men were gone. So they returned to the council and reported. The jail was securely locked with the guards standing outside when when he opened the gates. No one was there. But this is the main thing I want y'all to understand right here. The men who, who put in jail are standing in the temple teaching the people. There was a word that had to get out. God took them out of what was trying to hold them down. The enemy is trying to keep our testimonies. The enemy wants to stifle us. The enemy don't want us to tell about the goodness of God and what we've been delivered from. He wants to keep us just, just quiet. Just come to church. Just pay your tithes. Just sing in the choir. But don't tell nobody what you've been delivered from. Just, just worry about you. Just worry about you. You've been delivered. Don't worry about nobody else. Don't, you, you, you fine. You fine. Nobody got to know that you used to be a prostitute. Nobody used to know that you'd be a drug addict. Just don't worry about that. You look good now. But these men were bound. They were threatened. But they had to go tell the goodness of God. They had to give what God told them. Go speak life. And that's what they did. They went to speak life. The Bible said they went immediately. And when they went looking for them, they was exactly where they should have been. Speaking the word of God. Amen? Amen. So, the question was, what will it cost you? And the final question is, what did it cost you? What did it cost you? Everything that you went through that you got uh, healed or delivered from, what did it cost you? What will it cost you to spread the word of God? What will it cost you to help somebody get delivered? What will it cost you? What did it cost you when you got delivered? What did it cost you? We don't think about that. We always think about getting delivered, but what did it cost us when we got delivered? What would it cost us if we helped somebody else along this way? How many of us want to help somebody along this along the way? Are, are we are we here by ourselves? Are we are we just are we just in this thing for us? We, we, we should want to help somebody, shouldn't we? The Bible says, even though they saw the miracles, signs and wonders, they, they, no one dared to join them. The words that the apostle was preaching was so powerful. None of the other people, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, nobody could come near them because their testimonies were so strong. That's the way we should be. When we give our testimony, they should be so strong that people get delivered from it, but the enemy can't touch us. The enemy can't touch us because our testimonies are so strong about God delivering us. Even though they saw the signs and wonders, they dared to join. They saw right, but they rejected what they saw. What we've been delivered from, people will never know until we tell them. People will never know. People don't come on this side because they think they think we already arrived. They think, you know, we, they look at us, they think we perfect. Anybody perfect in here? Flaws and all, we still in this thing, ain't we? 
Amen. We got a story to tell. Amen. Truth be told, you look at our armor, it got nails in it, it got scars, it got rust on it, it's got all kind of stuff on it. Why? Because we've been through a lot. But we've been delivered from a lot. You ever think about this? Every day you wake up, it's your chance to tell your testimony. You ever get in the presence of God and say, God, I thank you, God, for everything you delivered me from. God, I thank you right now, God, that you healed, delivered me, and set me free, God. I thank you that I don't have that taste anymore, God. But somebody else needs to hear that. Somebody else needs to hear that. Amen? Anybody got anything to say? No, oh, man, if I'm quiet tonight. So, what will it cost you? What will it cost you to help somebody? A little time, a little effort. You shouldn't be embarrassed no more because you've been delivered from it, amen? That's the old you. That's the old man. Behold the new man. Amen? So it shouldn't cost you anything, should it? You shouldn't be embarrassed about what, what used to be. Tell everybody, look at you now. Amen? Father, we thank you tonight, God, because of who you are, God. God, we come tonight, God, just to thank you, God that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the words of our testimonies, God. Lord, we are in this place tonight, God. We've been battered, we've been bruised, we've been talked about. We've been hurt, we've been harmed, God. We've been cast aside, God. We're damaged, God. But God, you put us back on the wheel, God, and you made us new, God. You removed the cracks, the blemishes, the imperfections, God. God, you made us new, God. You made us into a vessel, God, that you could use, God. God, but these vessels still have a testimony of what they went through, God. God, we cannot be afraid to tell somebody about the goodness of God and all he's done for us, God. God, if we don't tell it, God, the addiction still has a hold on us, God. God, we got to be bold in our witness. That's in our confession. We are bold in our witnessing. I used to be addicted to this, but God delivered me. God, you are Jesus. They conquered him completely by the blood and the testimony. We got to speak the we got to speak the word and, and apply the blood. Speak the word and apply the blood. Father, we thank you tonight, God, that maybe there's somebody here or somebody's watching right now, God, that there's a stronghold, God, that there's something, God, that they have an addiction, God. They're dependent upon something. There's a craving, God, for something, God, and they know that it's the wrong craving, God, but right now, God, send somebody to them right now, God. Send somebody right now, God, that's not ashamed of the gospel. Somebody that's not ashamed to let them know I once was, but I am now. I'm healed. I'm delivered and I'm set free. The doors are being opened, God. You're opening the doors right now, God. People are stepping out right now, God. They're boldly speaking right now, God. Right now, if you're in this place or you're watching right now, God, send somebody their way right now, God. Send somebody their way right now, God. Touch their hearts right now, God. Let them know that what they're going through has not been crafted or designed, especially for them. They're not the only one that's going through what they're going through right now, God. God, I speak deliverance in their life right now, God. Lord, you heal me, God, you can heal them. You deliver me, God, you can deliver them, God. I thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. God, right now, God, maybe there's somebody that's not saved, God. If you raise your hand right where you are right now, say, God, I messed up, God. But right now, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. You are my Jesus, my Christ. You are my everything. Come into my life. Heal me, deliver me. 
set me free. Show me your grace. And Father, I believe right now, God, that your Father raised you from the dead with all power and authority in your hands. Father, I thank you right now, God, that I'm calling up on you, God, and that I'm saved. Father, right now, maybe there's somebody, God, that has went back into the world, God. They, they were once on this side, but they went back on that side, God. But they know you love them, God. God, you'll welcome them back home, God. Touch them right where they are right now, God. Welcome them home right now, God. My son, who once was dead, is now alive. So, Father, we thank you. We give you glory and we give you honor. It's in your name we pray. Amen. 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 We thank God for everybody that's here tonight. Amen. What, what, what did it cost you? What did it cost you? What did it cost you? Let that resonate in your mind. We thank God for people that have been sowing into True Love Deliverance Church. Amen. We thank you for sowing into the kingdom by way of True Love Deliverance Church. If you want to give, you can text the word give to 855-773-6297. Amen. No gift is too big. No gift is too small. We thank God for them all. Amen. We thank God for everybody that came tonight. Amen. Has everyone had a chance to give? Give a chance to give. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you tonight, God, that you've opened up doors and windows right now, God. Lord, we thank you right now, God, first of all, for a spiritual increase, God. Yeah. God, then we thank you right now, God, for a physical increase right now, God. And God, we thank you for financial increase, God. God, our spirit man, God, needs to be worked on, God. God, right now, God, raise that spirit man up, God. Strengthen him right now, God. Strengthen him, God, that he'll be able to withstand, that he'll be able to stand, God, that he'll be able to confess, God. Just like Peter and John, God, the doors are open right now, God. They're bold, God. Father, we thank you for this, for these blessings, God, that you're about to bestow upon us right now, God. Add to, multiply, but never subtract or divide, God. God, we thank you right now, God, for this good for the kingdom, God. And we give you glory and we give you honor. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 I want everybody to remember, don't forget about this Friday, right? Not the game, though. No. Don't forget about Saturday. Don't forget about Sunday. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Father, we thank you once again, God, because of who you are, God. We give you glory. We give you honor. We thank you for this day that you have made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it, God. Cover us in your blood and cap your angels around about us. Give us a peaceful night rest and an early morning rising, God. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. We are more than conquerors, God. We are created in your image and in your likeness, God. We have power and authority right now, God. We call those things to be not as though they were, God. God, we are the head and not the tail, God. We're blessed when we come in. We're blessed when we go out, God. God, our righteousness, God, follows us, God, everywhere we go, God. Everywhere our feet treads, God, is holy ground right now, God. We are bold and not witnessing, God, and we are reigning as kings of the earth. So, God, we thank you right now. Cover us in your blood, God. Cover every car, every home. Cover the, the, the highways and the byways. Keep us safe, God. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.